Uh, in Judges chapter 16, this is, should be a very familiar passage of Scripture. This is about like one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Because this was the real life Hulk. That's right. This was the man that nobody messed with in the town. This was the man that never lost a fight. But it wasn't just that he had, the, he had an amazing talent behind him. He had the touch of God on him. And tonight I would like to talk about that. But I want to look at here in verse number 1 in chapter 16. It says, And when Samson, then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an, there an harlot, and went in unto her. Verse number 1, skip to verse number 5. And the Bible says, And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him, and we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. Verse number 6, And Delilah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou might be bound be bound to afflict thee. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray God that you would help me tonight. Lord, I pray God that you would help me get these, these people, Lord, where I was when I read this verse, Lord. I pray God that you would help me tell the story in the life of Samson, God, that it may inspire some of us, Lord, that it may help us in our Christian walk, Lord. Lord, I know I'm nothing standing behind this pulpit without you, Father. I need your touch. I need your blessing, Lord. I need you to help me, Lord. I can do nothing for these people but God you can do way more than I can Lord I pray God in your name that you would touch me let let me uh, have a clarity of thought Lord in your name I pray amen I want to preach to you for a few minutes on on from glory to Gaza and we see here, we're talking about Samson. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to give you a brief overlook of what Samson's life and why Samson was born and why he had to come to play. In, ver in chapter 13 of Judges, we see, number one, we see the rebellion of Israel. Uh, back in this day and time, Israel would go back and forth uh, and they would worship God and then they would worship idols and then they'd worship God and then they'd worship idols. Well, when they started worshiping idols, then God would punish them. When you go, hey, if you're one of God's children and you get backslid on God, God's going to whoop your tail. So these were God's children, and when they started worshiping them idols, God, God, God gave, them, uh, gave them a spanking, if I may say so. Well, we see here their, their rebellion. They have went, they were worshiping God, and now they're worshiping idols again. So what does the Lord do? We see in chapter, chapter uh, 13, one, um, 1, the Bible says, And the children of Israel did evil again, again, which means it was a reoccurring thing, again, in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them unto the hand of the Philistines forty years. That's a, that's, a, that's a rough punishment right there. Hey, when I used to get my tail whooped, it may have been for about 40 seconds. This is 40 years. They were delivered into the hands 40 years. God wanted to get his, uh, wanted to get his uh, point across. Number one, we see the rebellion. Number two, we see the repercussion. There will always be reper repercussion of sin. There will always be we, a man sinned in the garden. Now we are where we're at now. Now we are in sin. Now we're born into sin. My little boy is lost. He is born into sin. That was the repercussion of Adam. The repercussion of uh, them going away word and after idol worship is they were delivered into the hands of the, of the Philistines. But the third thing I want to look at in uh, uh, chapter 13, 5, it says, For lo, thou... Well, let me... I'm getting ahead of myself. And, uh, and uh, number three, I want to look at the rescue by God. 
See, God will always give you a way out no matter what you get into. God will always give you an avenue to, and He'll always give you a way, a mercy, and that's the one thing about our Lord, that He has mercy on us. You backslide on Allah, see what they do. You backslide on Buddha, see what they do. You backslide on God, you can find yourself at an altar asking Him for His forgiveness and He'll, uh, he'll forgive you. God made a way out for these people. I know this, and you, we were born into sin. Uh, we were born into sin 6,000 years ago and God 2,000 years ago gave us a rescue. He gave us somebody that came and died on a cross that we might be saved, that we might be able to worship Him and be with Him. He gave us a gift to get us out. Amen. Now you may be asking, what is this rescue? What did God give? God gave Samson. Amen. Now we see here, we see here, Number one, we see the gift that God gave. He gave Samson. In verse number three, or there was a certain man, verse number two, a man of Zorah, the family of the Danites, whose name was Moab, and his wife was barren. Now, some of y'all may know what that means. Some of y'all may not. Barren means she could not have kids. Her womb was shut up. She could not have kids. Well, in verse number 3 it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not. But thou shalt conceive and bear a son. He gave her a promise. He said, You'll have a son. Yeah, Amen. And we see in verse number 4, And now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any clean thing, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall, being, he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. This was the gift that God gave. God gave Samson as a way out for is the Israelites to the Philistines. We see in verse in um, chapter 13, verse 3, it was the promise. And uh, verse number 5, we see the plan. He would be a Nazarite. A Nazarite was a vow to God. You were to separate yourself. You, he was, um, you were not to eat, uh, uh, he were not to touch any uh, dead thing. You were not to eat a, a drink of any strong drink. You are, um, you are had a guideline to live by which is something Christians nowadays don't like living by we have a guideline to live by our guideline to live by is right there that's our guideline. I've, I've had people tell me, I've heard people tell, uh, tell my dad, you're narrow-minded. Well, I'm just as narrow-minded as that Bible is. If it don't line up with the Bible, I ain't going to do it. Right. Amen. Amen. We see here he was a Nazarite. He was different. He was separated. He was, he, was, he was not like the other people. You know, when he was a kid, I'm sure he wasn't like the other kids. He, wasn't, he, was, he was a different, a different breed, a different type. You know, he may have been a little odd or weird. But I tell you what, he was a gift that God had gave. Not just his parents because she was barren, but he gave Israel. You know, God likes to work when nothing else will. God likes to work when when nobody when no, nobody could have helped her. Nobody could have. There was no uh, there was no egg transplants back then. She couldn't have went to a a doctor and got uh, and and tried to try her best to have a child and may have been able to conceive a child. All she had to depend on was the Lord, and that's all she had. And the Lord said, "You know what? I'm going to work two miracles here. I'm not just going to." Um, um, answer her prayer. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer Israel's call. Right. I'm going to answer Israel's your problems. I'm going to bring an answer to her problems. And we see here in verse 24 and 25 of chapter 13, the Bible says, "And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson, and the and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him." Amen. Amen glory. The child grew and the Lord blessed him. I tell you what, you can't do nothing in this life unless the Lord blesses you. You can't do nothing. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move, began to move him at times in the camp, camp of Dan. 
Tell you what, tonight I'm glad for the night that the Spirit of the Lord moved. He started moving. He started moving with us, Samson. He started doing things with Samson. And we see, and you know, he, he had... He is now born. He's into this world. He's growing up. I'm sure he's, he's becoming a teenager and a young man. Number two, I want to look at the girl. Number one was the gift. Number two, I want to look at the girl, the Philistine girl. Now, we see here in verse number one, we see, And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, what I want to know is why is, why is Samson... All of a sudden, he was on a good track in the, in the Lord. He was, the Lord was moving on him. And all of a sudden, he decides he's going to venture off and go to that wicked world in that wicked way. He's going to go mess with an ungodly woman. So he fell in love with an ungodly woman. And we see here in verse number 7, we see Samson's demand. He's seen this woman. He fell in love with this woman. She pleased him. And then we see in verse number 7, it says, And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson. She pleased Samson well. In verse number 6, excuse me, we see in, that was their date night, verse number 7. We see in, ver, in verse 10, it said, So his father went unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast. For so, for so used the young men to do. He went down there and they had a marriage. So now he, he, he fell in love with the girl. He dated the girl. I'm going to say dated. He probably, that's probably not what they did back in that day. But now he's married to the woman. Right. Now he's married to the woman. He's, and, and if you'll read the passage here, in um, verse number 2 it says, And he came up and told his father and mother and said, I have seen a woman of Timnath and the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. That was his demand. He said, get me that woman to wife. And you'll see in the, in the latter verses it says, Then his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Could you not choose one of your own kind? Could you not choose one that God had already, you know, could you not choose one of God's people? Did you have to go with a Philistine? Well, what his mother and father couldn't see was, this was God working in God's plan. God had an unseen hand and he was moving things around. Samson was supposed to fall in love with the Philistine girl. He was supposed to fall in love with her for what happens next. We see in verse number 14, we see that they're at the wedding and they're, and they're having a good time and they're, and, and they're, um, they're uh, talking and communicating and fellowshipping with her, um, with her people. And he... Um, Samson come up with this idea. He was going to have a riddle. He was going to make a riddle. And he says, out of, the, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Well, he told this to her, her family. Well, her family, he said, at the end of, at, at the, end of the uh, he said that they could not in three days expound the riddle. Verse number 15, it says, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson, Samson's wife, Entice him, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee in thy father's house. This was real, this was real important to them because he had already bet them. He was betting in this, in this riddle that he had had. It said in the earlier part, that he said, but if ye cannot declare it, talking about the riddle, declare it unto me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets. And they said unto him, put forth thy riddle, and we may hear it. So what he was saying for was, if y'all can declare it to me, I'll give you thirty sheets. Right. But if you can't, then you give me thirty sheets. Right. So they decided because they were... Not very smart, as I may put, put there. They decided they were going to entice her, and I said, or they were going to threaten her with her and her father's life. So they threatened her. In verse number 18, 
This is what happens. It says, And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day, Therefore, before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer. Good God. He called his woman a heifer. <coughs> Lord knows what would have happened if I would have called my wife a heifer. <laughs> Can you say the couch? Ye had not found out my riddle. He said, if you hadn't, a, he had said, if you hadn't a plow, if you hadn't a threatened my wife, you would have never found it out. You're a cheater. Right. You cheated me. But he still ha he held up his, uh, he held up his part of the bargain, and he went down. And the Bible says in verse number nineteen, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and slew thirty men of them and took their spool and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But, his, but Samson's wife, see right here, this was his devastation. But Samson's wife, the, man that he just, the woman that he just married, Samson's wife was given to his company, a companion, whom... He had used as his friend. So after, after he went back to his father's house, now Samson's wife was given to his companion. Here's where it gets good. Number three, I want to look at his great strength. Now we all know Samson was the strongest man that ever lived. He was the strongest man that ever did anything. We see here in verse number 14, we see in verse number 14, 18, it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why ask thou thus after my name? Seek, seeking it was a secret. For Moab took, his, took the kid with... For Moab took a kid with a meat offering and offered it up. Excuse me, that was the wrong verse. My notes are a little scrambled up. <laughs> we see here that he, before that he had, he had done the riddle, he had killed a lion. He had ripped open a lion. He had, he had gutted, he had, he had killed him as he was a kid. He had, he had, um, he had killed this lion. And he, and I'm, I don't know about you, but his great strength was so great. I'm not going to be the one that hopping in a cage with a lion. I'm not going to be the one to do it. We went to the Atlanta Zoo the other, other weekend. That lion looked pretty big, looked pretty tough, and I ain't one to jump in there with it. But this man right here had such a great strength, it didn't bother him. He, 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 he got a hold of that lion, and he smoked that lion and rent it apart as it was a kid, as it was a baby, as it was, a, as it was nothing to him. We see that he was, a, he was a very strong man physically, but he was also a very strong man mentally. We see the riddle that I just, I just um, talked about. He was a smart man, a cunning man, I honestly believe. You got to be kind of cunning to come up with a riddle. That's something I have a hard time, uh, have a hard time find, um, getting an answer to a riddle, let alone coming up with one. It takes a very smart man. And then we see... Number th then we see number four. We don't just see his great strength. We see his great fall. We see chapter 16, verse number one. I've read this. It says, And then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. Now, he just had had a big battle. Because of what happened to him, because of his grief, because of his, because of his, um, his um, problems with the last marriage, what he did is he went and found foxes and tied, tied foxes together, lit them on fire, and let them run through the Philistines', Philistines field after he found out and got mad. He let, them, he, he let them go through there and he destroyed their crop. Well, after that had happened... Um, after all that had happened, the Philistines went unto his wife, the one that was given to his, uh, given to his friend, and they killed him. Well, now he's really mad. 
Now he got really mad. So he went and we see in, uh, we see in chapter 15 verse number we see in chapter 15 verse number 18 it says and he was sore athirst. Or excuse me, 15. He said he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew th a thousand men therein. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the, jaw, with the jaw of an ass, shall I slay a thousand men. And he did. This man picked up a jawbone and slayed a thousand men. That's doing something. A lot of men couldn't do that with a sword or a gun, let alone a jawbone. And then we see here that he had a great victory and that God gave him rest. God gave him water and gave him water out of that um, because he was thirsty. He gave him water out of the jawbone. He had a great victory and he had great glory. And you know, the Lord, the, it says here, every time that he used his great strength, God, I mean, it's, it always says in the Bible that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him every time he used his strength. Because without God, he didn't have no strength. Hey, us in this life without God, we ain't got no strength as Christians. If we don't have the Lord walking by our side each day, we don't have any strength in this world. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't resist sin by ourselves. We can't do this by ourselves. We, we must have the Lord's help. We see here that this man had the touch of God on him, but now he's about to make a mistake. We see his great fall. He had been hurt. He had, been, he had been bitter at him. He had went out, took out his anger. God had given him a victory. God had given him a good, a good, a, a, um, God had given him a great victory over a thousand men. Well, now he's going to go take a rest. And you know what? Right after a victory may not be the best time to take a rest and just sit down and relax. But this is what he did. He went into Gaza and he seen a harlot. He went unto her. He knew her. Well, we see here in verse number 5 and verse number 4, it says, And it came to pass afterwards that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorki, those name, whose name was Delilah. I tell you what, he got into trouble because he fell in love with a woman. Ain't that the truth? Amen. That's all, all great men fall over a woman. Ain't that right, baby? We see here, we see number verse number one, we have a lustful woman. Verse number five, we have a lying woman. Verse number five is where the Philistines came unto her and told her, told her to find out his strength, and she found out his strength. We see here, we see here in verse number 20, after she had vexed him, and after she had pried, and she had pulled, and she had pried, and she had pried on him, and she had said in verse number 10, that, And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherein thou, might, thou mightest be bound. He told her once, he lied to her. He told her twice, he lied to her. And then verse number 16, it says, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Man, she was a nagging woman. That is rough right there. To the point to where he, he, he wanted, he, she had vexed him unto death. That is a nagging woman right there. Really wanted to know. You know what he should have done at that point? He should have packed his things and he should have left. But he didn't. Right. And now all this right here is working in God's plan. Working in, working in God's plan, I honestly believe. Because, you know, at the, beginning, at the beginning, it didn't say that Samson would deliver Israel. It said he would begin to deliver Israel. Yep. And we see here that she found his weakness in verse number 20. And she cut off the locks of his head. And it's verse 19. It says... And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him, call, caused him to shave off seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. Right. He gave her the key. 
The Bible says in verse number 20, And she said, The Philistines be upon you, Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before. The times before. And shake myself. And he went not that the Lord was departed from him. He knew not that the Lord had departed from him. Verse 21 says, But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down into Gaza and brought him with fetters and brass and he did grind in the prison house. This right here, sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it will leave scars. We're talking about a man that had the touch of God on him a few verses, a few chapters before. He had the touch of God on him. God was working in his life. God was doing things in his life. He was, he was going to be this great hero. He was going to be this great man. And then all of a sudden he, he starts fooling around and he starts, and he starts messing around and he doesn't, he starts getting away where and now he's at the point where sin took him farther than he needed to go. Now he's messed around too much and he's in, he's in darkness. He can't see no more. The man doesn't have eyes anymore. He, he, he had poked his eyes out. They, he, didn't, he didn't have no sight anymore. Hey, when you get backslid on God, God ain't going to direct your path no more. He's going to leave you alone for a little while and let you stumble over yourself and let you trip over yourself and let you make a fool out of yourself. God's, God may take away your sight so that you realize where you're at. And that's exactly what God did here. Number five, I want to look at his grave. Miss Amanda, if you will come to piano. I want to look at his grave. It was very humiliating. For such a man, such a strong man. And you know what? I don't, I don't want to sit here and think that he was a big man. I want to say he was a normal sized man that had a supernatural strength. That gives God more glory that he was a normal sized man than if he was nine foot tall and weighed 400 pounds of nothing but muscle. It would give God more glory if he was just a normal sized man or even a puny man. He might have been a small man. I don't know. But I know this, that his grave was humiliating. This great man that slayed thousands, a woman overtook him. We see here, at his grave, these people mocked him. They, had, they put him, they put him... It said, well, let's read. It says in verse 28, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. He didn't say, God, I want to I wanna avenge them for them mocking you and mocking the God of me. Or for worshiping their gods. He said, I want to avenge them for my two eyes. Right. That was a selfish request. But it says in verse 29, And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house, upon which the house stood on, which it was bored up of the one with the right hand, and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself and with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were in, therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which slew, he slew in his life. He wiped them out. He slew more in his death. He slew more at his funeral. He slew more then than he ever did in his life. When they lay you out on your casket before a pulpit, what's going to be your impact on, on people? Are you going to send people to hell by the way you lived? Because I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, they were a bunch of Philistines. Samson sent a lot of people to hell when he knocked that place down. That's right. 
I tell you, I don't want to be the one that gets a wayward. I don't want to be the one that loses his sight. I don't want to be the one that is bound by the world. I don't want to be the one that gets out there and gets locked up in chains and gets and gets made fun of and the, the people would come by and they'd look at him and say, you know what? God used to have his hand on him. Now look at him. I don't want people to look at my Facebook and it, you know I don't want them to look at look at my Facebook page or look at my life in 20 years and say God used to have his hand on that boy. Right. Now look at him. He's lost his sight. And he'll send more people to hell at his funeral than anybody. I don't want to be that way and I hope you don't want to be that way. His fatality rate in verse 30 his fatality rate was more than anything. More than he had ever slew in his lifetime. If you would, stand with me. And bow your heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the time you've given me, Father. God, I hope I've done your will, Lord. Lord, I hope I've done what you, uh, I've said everything you've wanted me to say, Lord. I hope that... You, Lord, that you would touch somebody with what I preach tonight, God. Lord, I pray, God, in your name, Lord, not to let me be like Samson. Lord, I do want to be used greatly, Lord. And we thank God for the life of Samson, God. He was a, he was a good, he was a very, uh, a very used of God in the first part of his life. But he never finished right. Lord, I want to finish right. Lord, I pray, God, in Your name that You would lead, guide, and direct, Lord, in this service, Lord. I pray, God, that You would touch us, Lord. Lord, I thank You, God, for all You're doing, all You're going to do, Lord. In Your name I pray. Amen.